sham chiropractic treatment compared to usual chiropractic care. Unfortunately, there is little research regarding the comparative effects of sham manipulation versus true manipulation. The study we are about to examine does just that, but on cursory evaluation, we could be led to very premature, if not inaccurate, conclusions. The researcher's conclusion? Short-term chiropractic treatment was superior to sham. However, treatment effects were not clinically important. Well, let's look into this further. The study we will discuss is actually the outgrowth of another study published earlier this year, Outcomes of Usual Chiropractic, the OUCH Randomized Controlled Trial of Adverse Events, published in Spine in 2013. This was a very interesting study conducted in Australia that compared the adverse effects of a conceived sham manipulation approach versus usual chiropractic care. Interestingly, they've found that sham treatments actually can result in perceived adverse events. For this research question, this study was a valuable start. Yet, the second publication based on this study group has some interesting flaws. The intention of the researchers was to take the same group in this previous study and compare effectiveness of usual chiropractic care versus a sham treatment. The title of the paper is Short-Term Usual Chiropractic Care for Spinal Pain, a Randomized Controlled Trial, published in Spine in 2013. Remember from the previous study that this group of 183 participants was randomized into a sham and usual care group. Unlike the first publication in this report, they measured participants at baseline and used only a two-week follow-up period. Treatment was delivered at Metropolitan Chiropractic Centers in Western Australia. Inclusion criteria for participants were being 18 years or older, having current spinal pain, neck, mid-back, or low back pain, of at least one week duration, scoring at least three out of a maximum 10 on the numerical rating scale for pain, and rating of 12 out of a maximum of 40 on the functional rating index. Exclusion criteria were the usual screen for significant or overlapping pathologies. Let's look graphically at how chronic this group of participants was. Here we see that almost 98% had pain for greater than three months, 75% greater than five years. We also see that for about 95%, it had been one year since their last four-week pain-free period. And not shown here, but 70% stated it had been one year since their last one-week pain-free period. Well, let's start with the obvious question. What is usual chiropractic care? Well, from a frequency perspective, only two treatments were delivered with one week between treatments. This may be usual care in Australia, but certainly not in the U.S., Canada, or even Europe, where a high-frequency approach of two to three times per week would have been utilized. Usual care varied among practitioners, but included the following and their percentage utilization. Primarily, manipulation, soft tissue therapy, and mobilization were utilized, but also range of motion exercise, strengthening exercise, traction, and heating. So what is a sham treatment in this study? The treating doctors used detuned ultrasound, and the doctors applied a randomly placed hand on the spine while ultrasound was administered to give a hands-on experience. Also, an activator instrument set at the lowest setting was applied through a tongue blade as the sham adjustment. The primary outcome measures were an 11-point numerical rating scale for pain and physical function assessed by the functional rating index. Secondary measurements included treatment satisfaction, global perceived change, minimal acceptable outcomes, and also administered at baseline were the pain catastrophizing state, start back screening tool, and the fear avoidance beliefs questionnaire. Participants' ability to determine which group they had been assigned to was assessed by the Bang Blinding Index. It's important to remind the listener that, as in the prior study, 67% of the sham group and 85% of the usual care group guessed the group to which they were randomized. And 25% of the sham group and 61% of the usual care group guessed correctly beyond what would be expected by chance. The results indicated that those receiving chiropractic treatment reported greater improvements in pain, physical function, and were more likely to experience more global improvement. 
for chiropractic, 48%, versus sham at 24%. There were no between-group differences in achieving a minimally acceptable outcome, 34% for the sham versus only 29% for the chiropractic group. The researchers' conclusion, short-term chiropractic treatment was superior to sham, however, treatment effects were not clinically important. Reaching the maximally acceptable outcome threshold was not associated with treatment satisfaction. This is curious, given a previous study had shown it to be such a strong predictor. So let's recap. This study does not reflect usual chiropractic care for most practitioners. The treatment effect was therefore not comparable to usual chiropractic care, especially over only a two-week period. The group was represented by mainly chronic back pain sufferers, which would suggest the need for longer care and follow-up. There are some curious issues with the group, knowing that they were being treated by a sham treatment. Why would a patient, knowing they were being treated by a sham, report improvement unless it reflects natural history? If so, why is natural history better than care? What is actually potentially dangerous about this publication is that anyone averse to chiropractic care will use it as an example of the lack of value for chiropractic compared to natural history. This could even make the headlines of some news media group looking for some sensationalist eye-catcher. So what should be done? A reproduction of this study should be performed with high-frequency care over the first two weeks, and in addition to a measure of improvement at this time point, another measure should occur at least at one month. For those in a study that are chronic, given the literature regarding the need for more care, a longer follow-up period is necessary. Hopefully further studies will address these issues.